This movie is based on the award-winning article written by journalist Matthew Teague, published in Esquire as The Friend, Love is Not Big Enough World. The story jumps back and forth through a 14-year period, telling us the story of a couple, Matt and Nicole, as they befriend a Dane who becomes a mainstay in their lives. When Nicole is diagnosed with cancer, Dane finds himself helping out with the house and their two children more and more until finally he moves in, initially for a two-week period before gradually realizing that he cannot leave them. The anguish of witnessing the terminal illness of a close friend or family member as it progresses from a medical threat to its most degenerative state is one of the hardest stories to pull off in a film without alienating the audience or getting trapped into modern sentimentality. It proves to be a bridge too far in this movie. Overlaying the drama with the false cheer of lively music and bouts of humor, the story feels out of touch with the very emotions it desperately tries to evoke. Nicole, who is near the end of her life, still looks beautiful as ever. It showcases one of the film's biggest failings, an unwillingness to show just how horrifying cancer can be. Another problem with the movie is how the movie employs an unnecessary series of time jumps punctuating each shift as either coming before or after a cancer diagnosis, a reminder that we're only supposed to care about these people because they've been hit with the cancer. This time jumps is incredibly disorienting as well. It's a gimmick to make us think there's more here, like the film's overused drone shots, and all it does is frustrate us even further. Because the film is not chronological, Matt, as a character, has no progression short of realizing he needs to actually take care of his kids. There is no insight into why he feels so driven to succeed or whether he feels any guilt once Nicole is sick. There is also hardly any chemistry between him and his supposed best friend, Dane. You never truly believe any of these people would like each other, let alone that Matt would like the vulnerable Dane. Dane's selfless friendship is the supposed subject of the film, though there's a lot of difficulty keeping it in focus. Even less convincing is Matt and Nicole's relationship, which is fraught with suspicion and betrayal under the appearance of true love. The only conflict is a plotline involving her cheating before she is struck down with cancer in what ultimately feels like punishment. Because there's no added depth to Nicole, short of she loves her husband and kids, we never know how she's felt about her past decisions in context. Though several times, more distant shots are used to suggest getting a wider perspective on the situation, most of the visuals point to the intimacy of a family in crisis, with their closed interiors and long hospital corridors. We gradually grow tired of the characters, often questioning exactly why we need to know so much about their lives. There's an overinvestment in our interest in these characters, especially since the movie struggles to bring them to life. There are narrative gaps being filled in that we don't really care about, as we're watching a mystery rather than an easy-to-predict drama. And any dramatic tension over the impact of someone's infidelity is immediately destroyed given that it all happens in a flashback. The movie never once brings these people clearly into focus. The overused music is a noisy accompaniment trying to counteract the somberness of the story. Overall, this is not a good movie. We do not recommend this movie at all.